All right, hold on. Okay, good evening, everyone, and good morning, Andrea. Today we will have the very last acting session. We're so sad about this, but let's just make it fun. And well, <laughs> uh, before we start, um, I would like to remind you about a few things regarding the housekeeping. It's, it's just basic ones, just to turn on the camera if possible, but turn off the microphone if I would rather go on the microphone while I'm not talking. And if you have any questions, just put it on the chat box and feel free to um, act or behave in the in the session. And yeah, without further ado, Andrea, the time is yours. Okay, great. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm so happy to see you. Welcome back to our time together. Uh, this is the final session of uh, my time with Triple Threat Academy. And I just wanna thank you all for being so willing and joyful about this process. It's been um, a delight uh, getting to know some of you and, uh, and being able to talk to all of you through the chat as well. Um, so today's focus is audition skills and strategies. I know that that's something that um, can be very daunting and can seem like a great mystery to everyone. What is the secret of a great audition? How do I know uh, what to do when I walk into the audition room? What are directors really looking for? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to, so there'll be um, an opportunity to do a couple of exercises, but there's going to be a lot of Q&A. We're going to do some um, uh, little mini exercises and interviews, but I'm also going to talk a lot. So feel free to take notes. It's my hope that went by the time the session is done, we've demystified the process a little bit for you. And you can walk away with some tools, some actual tools that you can take with you into the audition room and feel good about your preparation and your participation in the audition. Because in the end, we can't really control what other people think, right? It's just a human thing. Other people will think whatever they decide to think. But what we can do is show up as prepared and generous and willing as we can so that uh, it ensures a collaborative experience in the audition room. And whether we get the job or not, we can walk away with an experience of value on both sides. OK. Um, and more important than not, sometimes it's not about getting the actual job. It's about making an impression in the room that will get you another audition after that and getting the creative team to look forward to seeing your work anytime that you're available to see things, to audition for things, okay? So great. So um, per usual, I'd like to start our uh, session with a little meditation. Um, it's a morning meditation for you, but I love that, for me, but I love that it's an evening one for you. You've had a full day and um, I want you to close your eyes, put both hands on your heart, Take a deep inhale through your nose. And exhale and just let your body let go of all of the tensions of the day. Just release. And another inhale. That's right. And just let go. Exhale. And continue to inhale and exhale. And while you are doing this, I'm going to ask that you reflect upon your time uh, with Triple Threat Academy. And I want you to think about how you have grown since your first day here. Now, for the first uh, few breaths, I want you to think about your best moment so far in this program, whether it be when you actually sang or danced in a master class and uh, you got a lot of love in the chat or you learned something really uh, different and exciting. Think about that, that feeling of, of accomplishment of joy maybe you were especially um brave in a way that you didn't know you could be and i want you to just sit in that feeling as you inhale and exhale and try to identify what the feeling is and how you can carry it with you into your next experience like this okay now we're going to take another deep inhale in through the nose and we're going to exhale and as we continue to do that, now I want you to think about the hardest time you had during the Triple Threat Academy, the part where you felt like you didn't know what you were doing or you were embarrassed or 
you really didn't think you could uh, take the note that was being given to you at the time and you felt completely overwhelmed um, or you just got so anxious you couldn't listen correctly anymore because the voices in your head were making you so nervous. Think about that and try and remove yourself from the feeling. Try and picture yourself in that time. See if you can put a word to how you were feeling, right? Was it overwhelmed? Was it anxious? Was it embarrassed? And just try to identify as you're breathing in and breathing out, why? Was it because you were in front of a lot of people? Was it because you thought you were supposed to be perfect? And I just wanna give you the gentle reminder that we're here to work and be in process. There is no expectation of perfect. There is only an expectation of preparation and willingness and commitment. So just see if you can identify that. And now that you have a little distance from it, can you look at it and just say, okay, what did I learn from that experience? Because obviously this morning or this evening, you're no longer in it, or maybe some of you are in it right now and that's okay too. What did I learn or what am I learning from this, this feeling of tightness and this feeling of tension? What do I need to do for myself to be able to see it as a growth opportunity and not as an obstacle, not as a stumbling block, not as a mistake. Mistakes are proof that you're trying. So try and remember that. Mistakes are our friends and failures are our teaching tools. So Sometimes focusing on the failure when we really don't want to look at it, sometimes focusing on the failure can be the best educational moment for us because we look at it and say, okay, what would I want to do differently next time? Take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale. And again, we're going to inhale courage. And we're going to exhale fear. And we're going to inhale hope. And we're going to exhale doubt. And we're going to inhale collaboration. And we're going to exhale loneliness. Because the truth is, when we work in the theater, we are a team. And there is always someone to your left or your right that can provide some kind of inspiration or direction for the next step. So think collaboratively. When you make your mistakes, that's your process to evaluate maybe alone, but you are never alone in making mistakes. You're human, and particularly in a community of artists. We make mistakes all the time, and we're counted on to make those mistakes because we are in the business of portraying humans. And that's what humans do. So in these last um, couple of breaths, I just want you to make a commitment to yourself moving forward. Since this is our last session together that you're always gonna look for where to trust in the room as opposed to where to fear in the room walking into a room and fearing that people will judge you or that you won't be good enough cannot it's not a tool that can help you but trust can it trust is where can i trust and sometimes you look around and you go there's nowhere i don't trust my voice i don't trust myself i don't trust anything well then i ask you to just maybe take a breath and trust in the magic of the universe because one never knows what's going to happen in the next possible moment so maybe you can lean into that when nothing else. But remember, trust is always more helpful to you in your artistry than fear. Always. That said, take another deep breath in and exhale. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Are we ready to trust and play today? Let me know in the chat. And, and let me know some of you if this was um, 
was scary for you to think a little bit about your mistakes. It's okay. We need to look at those mistakes to, to know where our next steps will be. Thank you. Do any of you use your GP GPS when you're driving and then you make a wrong turn and then the little thing on your phone says it's rerouting? That's all you're doing when you look at your mistakes. You're rerouting, right? The car doesn't tell you, you've ruined it. Now you're not allowed to get to your destination, <laughs> right? You're just rerouting. Good. I'm so glad this was calming. Um, yeah, I know it can be scary to reflect back on your mistakes, but it's scarier to refuse to look at them. Once you start looking at them, they lose their power. Right? Um, good. So great. So we've done this. So now we're going to talk about the audition uh, process. I would love for you to tell me in the chat what is the biggest obstacle for you when you think of going in for an audition. Let's say I was to send to you an email today that said you all have an audition for blank tomorrow um what and it was something that you would really like to do what are the immediate feelings that come up for you just put them in the chat nervous <laughs> everyone says nervous okay good overthinking that's really good yeah yeah not good enough how to impress the directors am i ready yes Nervous, choked up, rejection, scared, but also excited, excited and scared. Yes, good. Uh, agitated. I have to look confident. Okay. Uh, it's, and yes, this is great. The external things I can't control sometimes get to me. Yes. Good. So this is all good. So there's a difference between the emotional response and then what you have to actually do to get ready, right? So we mentioned before that you cannot control what happens like you actually cannot force someone to smile during your audition right you know that right they might love it but you can't force them to do that or show any outward sign of loving it you can't force them to like it you couldn't force them to hate it really think about it that way if you went and said i'm going to really make them hate this audition you can't guarantee that you could even do that so ultimately um what you're going to go in there and do is really up to you and your process. Um, I love that so many people said nervous. There is a fantastic little saying that I got in a fortune cookie. Look, I brought my little fortune because I saved it. I saved it for this. And it says, it's all right to have butterflies in your stomach. Just get them to fly in formation. Right? Will someone type that into the chat for me? It's all right to have butterflies in your stomach. Just get them to fly in formation. Um, someone type that in so that people can see it. That is really the secret because ultimately you're still going to get, thank you, Kalisha. You're still going to get butterflies every time. Somebody like me has been doing this for decades and I have been on Broadway several times and I've done things all over the world and on television. Does not mean, or movie, doesn't mean that I don't get nervous. I still get nervous. So first of all, I just want to dispel the idea that once you get to a certain level, you're not nervous anymore. I do get nervous. I just know how to work with my nerves a little better because I have had a lot of experience being nervous and being successful and failing. <laughs> you know, the failure helps. So, um, so I just want to say right off the bat that you do not want to um, worry about being nervous. Like, oh, if I'm nervous, I must not be ready. No, there's a very fine line between nervousness and excitement, right? Somebody said excited and scared, like Little Red and Into the Woods, right? It's kind of the same feeling. So just tell yourself, yes, these are, these are feelings, but it's also because I care and because I'm excited about what I could possibly do today. Great. So um, terrific. Let me, can I have a couple of volunteers here? Can I have like three people? Is that possible to, that I can talk to? Great. Um, Karaka, will you pick them for me? Yes, I think we'll just go by the order they raise their hand. So we have Great. Clarita, uh, Benita, and Kalisha. Okay, Kalisha, Benita, and what I missed the 
I only yeah. see I one pin. That. Okay, great. Great. One pin all. And actually, everyone who's watching this is, I, I want you to participate in this as well. But um, we're going to pretend that this team in front of me is the team of directors. You're also, everybody that is on this Zoom, I want you to pretend you're the director of the show, okay? Not the auditioner, not the actor. You are the director of the show. And it is your job to get your show cast in the next 48 hours, okay? Can we all understand that? Great. Um, Kalisha, can you tell and think of a show that you would like to do? I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you choose, pick yeah. any musical that you want to cast. Anastasia. Anastasia. Okay, good. And so what will you, what will you need in Anastasia? Do you need um, young people? Do you, do you need people under, uh, between 20 and 35 years old? Do you need people over, how many people over 50 do you need? How many people in the chorus, roughly? I'm gonna need um, mainly three leads with Anastasia, Dimitri, and um, Vlad. And Vlad is a little bit older. And uh, Anastasia and Dimitri is around like 20-ish, like a uh, young adult. Um, and probably for the um, chorus, maybe about 10 people. Okay, and um, Clarissa, uh, can you be our musical director? Yes. Um, so what will you, what kind of skill set will you need for these people auditioning for Anastasia? Should they be people who are really good at singing rock music, opera? What kind of style, what kind of musical style are you looking for? Do you know this musical? Sorry, I didn't ask. Yes, I know, I know. Okay, um, great. I would probably look for people who have a good, probably a classical background, but also very flexible with um, belting and also have a very good mixing voice. Um, so Great. it's not rock at all. It's more ballad type of yeah songs. Okay, great. And... Um... Great. And so, Benita, um, I'm going to give you the job of, um, we're going to call you the casting director. Okay. So, the casting director in, a, in an audition situation is the person who, certainly in, in, in very big markets, let's say Kalisha doesn't know all of the actors in town auditioning, right? So, she is counting on you, Benita who really knows the community and has seen everybody here work to bring in, if we only have, let's say um, 200 slots, I'll make it smaller. If we have Triple Threat Academy, we only have 60 slots, 30 slots in a day, right? We only have 60 slots and you know 200 people. You have to pick the 60 people that are going to get to audition for Kalisha, right? So if you know a bunch of people who are all want to audition and are all talented, what would be, how would you narrow it down? How do I narrow it down? By, um, uh, first by um, if they meet the requirements of the physical, uh, physical requirements, and then uh, we'll see the acting, uh, the acting ability. We'll test it. Great. And also, uh, also vocally, right? What if you have someone who can only sing, who was the star of Rent and can only sing very rock and roll things and is very talented? Do you think that would be uh, useful to bring them in for Kalisha or do you think it would be a waste of time? Um, there's always a room for um, improvement, I think. Um, I, if uh, he ha she or he has the potential to to sing an Anastasia musical, um, uh, whether they have um, a rock and roll background, and if she or he is willing uh, to 
to convert her or his style into um, more like opera or um, in this case in Anastasia's style, then um, then I think we can bring in another um, instructor. Okay. So here's the, here is, first of all, I love, I agree with you that there is always room for improvement and many people, especially in the musical theater, we know have to do different kinds of styles and should be trained to do different kinds of styles. However, I'm just going to remind you that in the end, there's 48 hours and you can't bring, if you bring someone in for Kalisha who is not prepared or doesn't really know the style or doesn't really fit in it at all. That's a waste of a spot, right? And now Kalisha says, hmm, maybe I don't hire Benita next time to be my casting director because she doesn't really know what I'm looking for and I don't really have more time. I only have 60 spots, right? This is stuff you've never thought about before, right? Yeah. Again, this is what's going on on the other side, right? So, and, and a casting director can be useful because and if it's not called the casting director in your particular production, but there is always someone maybe who has a greater knowledge of the community. Sometimes you'll bring a, a guest director. For example, if j Pack was doing a show and they brought me in to direct, you know, maybe Caraca would be the one to say to me, these are the people that you should probably see for this style first. I know them. I know what their skill set is, and I think it matches what you're looking for. Right? Do you understand? So that, Benita, would be your job. Right. Also, right. So even though, so you're, you're the person who takes all the information that Kalisha has told you she's looking for, Clarissa has told you she's looking for, um, the choreographer, let's say we have another person who's doing the dancing and you are looking at the talent pool and you say, okay, these are the best possible candidates for this. Because what you don't want is for uh, Kalisha and Clarissa to be out of time and say, no one was suitable you brought me talented people, but some of them were unprepared and wasted my time. And some of them were not, um, you brought me a bunch of, you know, you brought me 10 wonderfully skilled, uh, 85 year old actors. And this is Anastasia and I need actors of a certain age. Make sense. Right. You said that the physical appearance, all that. Right. So, there's one more thing. There's also one more piece. So what we're looking for now is everyone in the chat, let me know in the chat you're getting this. So if you're all the directors, right, and you know what you're looking for, you're looking for people who can sing it, who can dance it, who can act it, who are age appropriate, appearance appropriate, right? They have an essence that is perfect for the part, right? There's one more thing that is, uh, that they're looking for. And um, as far as having somebody in the rehearsal room with them, can anybody take a guess on what that might be? The original cast of Anastasia? No, they're not looking for the, I mean, I think sometimes, yes, directors are looking for someone who's like the original cast, but some directors want to do things that are, that are very different. Rakaraka for the win how easy they are to work with because if you walk in the door attitude thank you nyla if you are the most talented most perfect most excellent person but in your audition uh, setting you are not collaborative you are defensive right immediately uh relationship and chemistry good gina immediately it starts to tell you about what this person might be like in rehearsal, right? And now, how long, uh, let's say this particular play has uh, four weeks of rehearsal, okay? It's not a lot. Um, what will, although, you know, a lot of times on Broadway, yeah, you have like three to five and that's it. So let's say four weeks of rehearsal. And so to put a whole show together, and if you have one person who is slowing the action down with their attitude, with their problems, they're fighting with people, how, how easy, how much harder is it gonna be for Kalisha for you to do your job? What do you think? 
Um, I think it will be harder to do the job because like they need to work collaboratively as a team to like produce the show well. So I think that if there's one person that's like holding everyone back, it's going to be hard to move forward. That's right. And you said the magic word here. This is a team. I think sometimes, you know, we have a mis per, misconception of what it is to get cast in a show. We think the director just casts us and we're the star and we're alone and we're perfect and that's it, <laughs> right? And everybody just admires us, right? That's the dream. And this is why everyone gets so nervous because they say, how can I achieve that? Well, it's not at all what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to get on a team and you're trying to show what a great team player you are and how valuable and helpful you are to the project. Uh, Christopher has a question. Does that mean as actors, you always have to follow the director's instructions or can you tell them if you think you're uncomfortable or prefer to do it in another way? We will get to that in a minute. It's a great question, Christopher. Okay, so just to finish up here. So these that we've got our director, we've got our music director and our casting director. Great. So if I tell you you have 48 hours, think about that. That's, um, let's say it's 10 a.m. to, what's a triple threat day? Like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m.? Or no, you have a you have even longer days there, don't you? Triple Threat Academy Day. But uh, typically, you'll have like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then you have lunch in the middle, an hour off for lunch in the middle. Two days. And that's it. You have to have a cast. And you also have to have uh, not just uh, the, the cast that you want, you should also have a second and third choice for every part. Why is that? For substitute uh, in case they're sick or um, unavailable and in the uh, in the such a um, crucial time. Yes, and not a, not only um, not only for understudies when you do the production, but let's say uh, who is here. Let's say Eln Path. Hi Eln. Um, let's say Eln auditioned for this and gave a great audition and then left the audition and her family said, guess what? We're moving away. We're not going to be in town for the production. So you put, you picked Eln, you built everything around Eln and then you found out she can't even be in it. Now, what do you do? You have to have a second choice, right? You have to have a second choice. You have a third choice. Now it might be that you picked a Dimitri for Eln to play Anastasia but now, um, now that Ellen's not doing it, you don't think that first Dimitri is right. Who's the second one who might be better for Ellen? You see what I'm saying? This is complicated. And time is of the essence. You have a short time to do it. It's like a math problem. You have to have all of these variable solutions. And they need to be, they have to have the skill set and they have to be, they have to be right for it and they have to be easy to work with. Does this seem like a super easy job that the three of you have? No, right? It's stressful. And by the way, your next job depends on how well you do this, right? Particularly Benita, because are you going to be hired again based on the people that you brought in, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what goes on with that. Great. So first of all, thank you. I would like to thank the team of Anastasia. Thank you very much. I'm going to say goodbye now. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So now the next question is, uh, the, now, the, the next question is, when you walk into the audition room, do you all understand now the service that you are providing? Do you see how actually they need you? So this is something I want to illuminate for you. It's not so much that you need them. First of all, now imagine our Anastasia team, right? And having somebody walk in the door who is, uh, when they don't have a lot of time, they have a job to do. They want it to be excellent, correct? Because everybody wants their thing to be good of quality. Um, now imagine someone coming in with the energy of just being really needy and really needing the, needing to be liked. What is that? Put in the chat. Like, what do you, if you were the director and you had the job, 
of any of these three ladies and someone came in feeling like you could just feel the energy that they desperately wanted to be liked before they even started singing their song, what would that bring up in you? What would you think? Would you be excited to see them? Would you be uh, maybe not interested? Off-putting? Yeah. What else? Doubtful. Right. Right. So if someone is doubtful right before you even start singing, <laughs> that doesn't help you, right? Right? Because you're walking in now, now let's go back to being in the actor's shoes. We have some weird idea in our heads, some fantasy that we have to go in and somehow create some magic and be perfect and liked. And if we don't, it's going to be the worst day that ever happened, right? When really, what we need to do, having prepared everything for the audition correctly and put the work in to be prepared, we have to go in and be helpful, right? You're actually, you're coming in as a service. Do you understand? What happens if you walk in the door and say, hello, I'm here, I'm Andrea. I understand you're looking for somebody who actually is just like me, who sings and acts at the same time. How can I help? Now, you're not gonna say that, that's the subtext. But how can I help is really how you walk into the room to do this, okay? So now what I would like to do is I would like to have uh, five more people. Karaka, if you can set that up, raise your hands. And I want to try a little exercise. As we're talking about this, um, any questions? Jane, anyone else? We have Desia. It'll be easy. Well, it'll be simple. I don't know if it'll be easy. You'll see. We have uh, Alan. So she was just called that, I think. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Right, Alan, Kezia, Jane, Noor, and Ayumi. Great. Okay, great. That's so now what we're right. gonna practice, so now we're gonna practice walking into a room and we're gonna, you're going to look into the camera, you're going to tell me your name and you're gonna say, how can I help? Actually, you don't have to look in the camera. That that's look look at my face. <laughs> because that's what you would do in the room. Okay. So one at a time, I want you to try this. Jane, you're gonna be first, okay? All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, can you recap again just a little bit? That's okay. So okay. now I want you to imagine, I'll walk you through it. Easy. Yeah. Uh, you're about to go into an audition for that team of Anastasia, right? Yeah. You've prepared songs, a song, a musical, uh, excuse me, you've prepared a song that is appropriate. You feel really good about what you have to bring to the party, right? And yes. um, good. So now you're just going to walk in the room as if you're introduced. You're not going to walk in. Sorry. We're, we're simulating this. You're going to, well, actually, you can stand up and walk into frame, can't you? Yeah, can. Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to leave that. And then I want you to sit in the chair. And then I want you to just look at uh, me on the screen and tell me uh, your name. Say, hi, I'm blank. And then say, um, how can I help? And I want you to mean it. So what you need to think before you even walk into frame is, wow, mm -hmm. that team in there is trying to cast a show and they're looking for people who are like me. Let me go in and tell them and ask them, how can I be helpful to you? Okay. But the line, but the line is, hi, I'm first name, last name. How can I help? Okay. Let's okay. Try hi, I'm Jane Elena. How can I help you? Nice. Nice. I like that. How'd that feel? It felt like I knew what I was doing. I knew what I had to offer. <laughs> yes. And guess what? That's what we're looking for. Nobody is thinking yeah. about the perfect song or the perfect voice. I want someone to walk in the door. You know, if I'm Kalisha, 
I, I want someone to walk in the door and know what they're doing. And, and what was the last thing you said? I knew what I was doing and I, um, I knew what I had to offer and I knew what I had to yes. offer. That is the name. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Ellen, let's try. Okay. Did I get up? Good job, Jane. <laughs> now you'll get up. Yeah. I'm on the floor, so I'm going to crawl. <laughs> <laughs> don't crawl. Do not crawl. Then I don't want you to do that. Okay. You have to be in your power before you walk into the audition room. <laughs> Crawling is not acceptable. <laughs> I, I know what I'm doing and I know what I have to offer. You cannot do that on your hands and knees. Okay. okay. Hi, my name is Ellen Path. How can I help? Great, great. Now let's do it one more time. And instead of even looking at me, can you look at the little green light on your computer screen? Can you look in the camera when you do it? Oh, okay. Or I have a green light. I don't know what you have, but okay. you know where the camera is? Yeah. Okay, before you do it, let me just tell, walk you through it. So you're gonna walk in, you're gonna sit down calmly. You're gonna make eye contact with that. I wish we were doing this in person, but this is the best yeah. way to do it on Zoom. Uh, you're gonna make eye contact with that camera so that the rest of us watching can actually see you connect with us. And you'll say your name slowly and, and how can I help? And really mean it. Ask the question. Okay. Hi, my name is Ellen Path. How can I help? How'd that feel? You're still nervous. Do it I again. Feel, Do it again. I feel like I, I feel like it again. It's all scripted. <laughs> uh, Actually, but I... First of all, your name, okay, let's break that down. You said you feel like it's all scripted. Well, yeah. you, you're, whenever you introduce yourself in any part of your life, Ellen, you, you have to say your name. That's scripted, right? Yeah. But it depends, right? And then how can I help has a real meaning behind it. You can't just say the line, right? I'll give you an example. If it's so scripted, what is the difference between, hello, I'm Andrea Burns. How can I help? <laughs> What's the difference between that and hello, I'm Andrea Burns. How can I help? Same lines. Right? Yeah. It's the or, hello, I'm Andrea Burns. How can I help? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, we see it all in auditions in a way, you know? Even that attitude, that, that attitude only comes from nervousness. It's not because people are walking and trying to be mean, right? It's just our nervousness that gets in the way. So now, do you have, um, do you, have you ever babysat before? Or do you have any young people? In, do you have any um, nieces or nephews or any young people in your life? Yeah. Okay. And have you ever had to help their parents out? Um, not really. Okay, so tell me who the young person is. I'm the is younger. So. Who are, who are the younger? Who is in your life that's younger? Uh, cousins, but I don't really live near them. So, okay, but let's picture one of your cousins, and your cousin is trying to um tie their shoe, and they can't do it. And you're gonna come in and and. Can you imagine the feelings that you would feel when you, you when you see them and say, I'll help you? That's mm -hmm. what it is. The problem is that we go into the audition room thinking, oh, I just want to say the perfect thing and uh, you help me, not I help you. No, remember, remember these three, uh, these three women who just have, who have 48 hours. Can you help them or not? Because if you can't help them, and are not willing to try, you shouldn't be auditioning. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just walk in, say your name, and say, how can I help? Hello, my name is Ellen Path. How can I help you? Beautiful. You feel that? Do you guys see that difference? It's just a matter of connection. Now I'm interested in what you have to sing and what you have to say. So here we are all worried about picking the right song and hitting the big note. And your audition starts the moment you touch the doorknob on the outside of the room. 
the way you walk in the door with purpose, knowing what you have to offer, knowing what you're doing and generosity. Okay. Kids. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Hi, I'm Kezia Hani. Kezia, you froze yeah, for me. Oh, there you go. Uh, Sorry, it broke up yeah. in the middle, but it was really good. I loved the high and then it froze. And then I got the second yeah. high. One more time, one more time. Oh, yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Kezia Hani. How can I help? Beautiful. Do you guys believe that? I liked it. And it doesn't happen. And you happen to be very cheerful. It doesn't mean you have to come in and be super cheerful. That just felt true to Kezia. That felt like I was actually seeing her. Does that make sense? <laughs> Noor, you want to try? Wait, I can just try it now, right? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Um, what can I help you? Sorry, still a bit nervous. <laughs> you know what? It was still yes. very good. It was still very good. Can anyone tell me in the chat why? The hello was so present. So again, it doesn't even matter. I would have said if you had done that and you skipped your name is what you did. You just went, ha, hello, uh, how can That's I so help you? Yeah, look, your, the director said the hello was, the director liked you. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, that's what's important. In the end, it's not even about the line. If you had said that and not introduced yourself, I would have felt comfortable enough to say, oh, great. I'm sorry. What's your name? Right? So try it again. Yeah. Doesn't have to be okay. perfect. Good. Okay. Just has to be you. Hi, hello, I am Kiki. Um, what can I help you? Great, great. Um, one more time, because now I felt like that was a little super cheerful. I want you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. No, listen, there are no apologies necessary. And the very important thing here is you do not apologize in the audition room at any time, any time. You know, you woke up, you took a shower, you got dressed, you're here, you're ready to work. Just because you make a mistake, you, there's no apologies here. Okay. You can apologize if you absolutely never did your homework and you walk in and you're rude to people. That's different. Okay. Let's try it again. One more time. And I want you to take just a deep breath. I love your energy. Um, do you, you go by Kiki instead of Noor? You, you like yeah. Kiki? Okay, great. Kiki, I love your energy. So you don't have to put on anything extra for me. Just come in and say hello to me. Okay. Okay. Hello, um, I'm Kiki. How can I help? Fantastic. Do you all feel that? Are you excited to have that person in the room? Now, aren't you looking forward? Great smile and vibes, says Karaka, I love it, right? What, yeah, all of a sudden now I'm interested. What, I wonder what she chose to sing. I wonder what this is going to be, right? Great, great. And again, did you feel the difference between the one where Kiki tried to be very cheerful and this one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's not about I just want you to feel the most um, authentically yourself. Remember I say, go with trust, not with fear. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. Good, good, great. Great work there, Kiki. Um, Ayumi. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Ayumi Trusty. How can I help you? Great, very nice. I want you to do it one more time and just take your time. 
a little bit. I felt like it was fast. Yeah. To, okay. <laughs> Not, um, did it feel, um, yeah, for you, I just want you to, I just want you to relax before you walk in the room. And I want you to think this thought, okay. they need my help. They need me. So let me introduce myself and offer my help. Help be generous, not intimidated. Hello, I'm Amy Trusty. How can I help you? Nice, nice. I like that. Do you feel the difference? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I feel a bit like more relaxed than the first one. I felt like yes. really nervous. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, the thing here. How can we, before, when we're outside of that audition room, what can we tell ourselves so that we can walk in feeling um, in control, feeling not, I won't say in control. Let me take that back so that we can fall, walk in with our butterflies flying in formation, right? Knowing who we are and knowing what we have to offer, knowing what we're doing. You can't say you don't know what you're doing when you're saying your name. You all know how to say your name, right? And you've all offered, you've all been generous in your lifetimes, at least once, right? So it's really a reframing of the mind and thinking to yourself, okay, so this team needs my help in the next 48 hours. How can I help? Right? Now, you won't do that in... Uh, when you actually will say, how can I help when you're in the room, but it's going to be in the, um, it's going to be in the way you say it. Okay. Thank you very much. This group was fantastic. Can I have five more? Right. Thank you. Raise your hand if you would like to. Raise your hand if you'd like to come up. Yep. We I'm have. just going to take this to the here. next step. Hi, Nyla. Is anybody Hi. else? Okay, good. Diane, good. And we also have Come on Marina, up, it'll be fun. Diane and Alexandra. Good, Diane. Alexandra. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. And those of you not coming up, tell me in the chat what feels, um, why you think this is important in the audition room how do you feel it makes a difference um okay so now what i'd like to do with this group is can we pretend we're auditioning um and can you uh either pick the name of a song you're going to sing or a monologue the play that it's from just pick something that you like to do right can everybody think of something a title it's just, we're just going to use it for the title. You're not going to have to sing the song or do the monologue. Just pick the title. Okay. You all have it? If you don't have one, raise your hand and I'll give you, uh, I'll give you one. Or, or send us a couple of titles in the chat. Who needs a song title? Are you guys good? Everybody good? Okay, fine. Great. So now what I would like you to do, we're gonna do the how can I help exercise, except you're not gonna say how can I help. You're going to say the name, your name, and then you're going to say, and this is as if you're introducing the song or monologue you're about to do. Is that clear? I don't see any heads nodding. Can you, is that clear? Excuse me, could you repeat that one more? Because yes. there's some, yeah. Yes. Okay. What I would like you to do is walk in, do the same. We're going to do the, almost the same thing we just saw. Come into frame, say your name. Instead of saying the words, how can I help? You are going to introduce the, the piece that you're about to say. So if I say, I am going to, uh, I'm auditioning for Anastasia. I'll say, my name is Andrea Burns. This is Journey to the Past. Journey to the Past is a song from Anastasia, right? So just introduce the title. Or I'll say, um, I'm going to do a monologue. My name is Andrea Burns. This is from The Women or something like that, right? 
So um, that's all I want you to do. But when you say the title, I want you to be thinking, how can I help? I want you to be thinking, how can I help the whole time? Even when you say your name, even when you say it, it's just the energy, right? Let's start with um, Karina. Hello? Yeah. Can okay. we start with you? Sure. Uh, shall I start now? Yes. So I want you to uh, come in and say your name and what it's from. But I want you to, when you're off, you're off camera right now, just think about how we need your help and you're going to walk in and help us. Be generous to us. We need you. Hello, my name is Karina Chandra, and this is Journey to the Past. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great. Great. I feel that. Uh, put in the chat. Are you getting the how can I help vibes? Good. Um, Bunga? Yes. Are you ready? Okay. Um, pardon. Give me two seconds, the age of Adeline, okay? Hello, my name is Bunga, and this is the age of the Adeline. Great. Let's give you one more shot at that, because you got a okay. little nervous towards that. <laughs> I am? <laughs> yeah, nervous is good, nervous is good, but um, don't worry about, don't worry about the title, it's not that important. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not about the okay. words. It's just about if, if it's easier to say something easier, say something easier. Okay. Um, uh, let's just start again. That was a great start though. Okay. Hello, my name is Bunga and this is the age of Adeline. Excellent, you feel that? Yeah. Now, the feel thing like is- more for a moment. Yes, but also this is, I'm going to do an exaggerated version of how you ended it. You said this, you were very warm and wonderful. You said, this is the age of Adeline. <laughs> you okay. looked away, your face dropped, you're oh. reading. Okay. So stay, stay after I say it, it's also important, right? Let me ask you this. Okay. If you and I were having a conversation okay. and I said, I'm going to say hello, you say how are you, and I'm going to say I'm fine, and watch me after I say I'm fine, right? Okay. Hello, Bunga. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Oh, okay. I you know see, I, mean? I see. That is going to inform okay. the way you say your next thing, right? Okay. So when you introduce your piece, and you say the name of the piece, but then you look like you've lost all of the confidence. Your director is going to say, is she okay? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, remember what Jane said, I know what I'm doing and what I okay. have to offer. Okay, I know what I'm doing. Okay. Of course you do. Look at you. You're beautiful. You have Your hello was beautiful. Thank you. You know what you're doing. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, shall, shall I try it one more or I give please, it? Please, please try okay. it one more time. Yes. Hello, my name is Bunga and this is the age of Adeline. Nice, much better, much better. Good, good thank work you. there. Alexandra, you're welcome. Hi, hey, Andrea, should I walk from like, should I get out of the screen and walk into it? Sure, if that helps, yeah. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Alexa, and this is Once Upon a December. Great, great. How'd that feel? I was a little nervous, and I felt like it was a little bit, bit rushed, but um, essentially, I feel like I knew what I wanted to offer to Yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel it was even rushed. Like if you feel nervous, it's okay. You're going to feel nervous. We all know that, right? Okay. Right. It's if you start to feel really bad in the middle, you'll know. Right. So if it was a little rushed, give it another chance. If you want to, if you want to slow it down a little bit, but I was fine with it. But do another one okay. for your own confidence. Let's go. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Alexa, and this is Once Upon a December. Beautiful. You, you feel that, everyone? You're, she's ready. She's ready to sing her song. I'm ready to hear it. Really good. Okay, Dion. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> Hi, I'm Diane, and I'm gonna sing Road of Your Boy by Aladdin. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, that big exhale was really good because you're getting rid of your nerves, right? But that, one, that doesn't happen in the audition room, that happens outside or off yeah. camera, right? <laughs> good. Um, and I want you to do it one more time and just remember this, what you're saying is a help to us. Can you, can you connect that? Can you understand yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Think about, um, yeah, think about the three women you were auditioning for. They really need to hear something. Actually, what makes your song a great choice? Um, what do you think? Uh, Clarissa, are you around? Yeah. What, why, why does Dion singing make, make, Dion singing Proud of Your something from Aladdin. Why is that a good choice for this musical style? It's it has the same core because both of them are Disney. And yes. the voice type is really similar too. So it will definitely be a correct song choices for this audition. Great. Perfect. Thank you, Clarissa. Great answer. And so now Dion. You have something valuable for us. So come in and tell us, not only am I going to let you know that I can help, but I, ha I, have, I have what you need. Let me help you. Don't watch yourself. The problem is we all think we're watching ourselves like this. Walk into a room and be the solution to the problem. Be helpful. Let's try again. But I feel a little, little bit nervous. <laughs> yes, you will. Nervous yeah. is not nervous is nervous. But uh, you here, let me give you a very quick example. I was um, <clears throat> doing a concert in Italy last week. and I was out during the day and being a um, tourist. And there was a little boy and he was playing with his friend and they were on top of a fence and one jumped down. And the other boy was stuck up, up on the fence very high. And he was saying, Ayutami, Ayutami, help me. And he was try trying to get his little friend to help him, but the friend wouldn't help him. So I wanted to help him. This is me approaching a little boy, but I was nervous because I didn't know if his mother or father were there. You know, I wanted to do the right thing. I didn't see any adults. So I went to him and I opened my hands like, is this okay? Can I help you down? And he said, oh, Grazie, you know, he jumped into my arms and he came down, right? So what I'm saying is I was looking at a six-year-old boy who I didn't know, who was feeling kind of helpless and I was nervous, right? Because I wanted to help, but I was still nervous. It's okay, you're always gonna be nervous. He wasn't auditioning to be, I, he wasn't the director of a big film. He was a six-year-old boy who needed help, right? So I just, I. It both are important. You helping and you're being nervous is just part of it. It's okay. So I have to repeat it again? Yes. Okay. But I want you to think about what I said. You are helping us. Yes. Okay. Hello. I'm Diane and I'm going to sing Proud of Your Boy by Aladdin. How does that feel? <laughs> I feel <laughs> something heavy inside me and then poof, it's gone. Say more about that. What do you mean? It was inside you while you were saying it? Say that again. I mean, I, I want to understand what you're saying. Yeah, some, like uh, something heavy inside me and then when I say it and it feels like lift up for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good, because I've said this before too. I'm not yelling at you, I'm just typing in all caps. <laughs> Hold on. 
<laughs> I've said this before. When in doubt, focus out. Focus on the people you're helping. Don't focus on yourself. Okay. When you come from a place of generosity, it's lifted. Does that make yeah. sense, everyone? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That was beautiful, Dion. That was a really big difference. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So I'm going to say bye to this group. Thank you. Really good. So, um, great. So what are we, um, what do we realize now before we walk into the audition room? What is important? What is important for us to do before we walk into the room for ourselves? We have to get to the point where we know what we're doing and we know what we have to offer, right? And sometimes knowing what we have to offer is, is the right song for the right show and a singing voice and a collaborative spirit. That's it. Don't worry about all the rest, right? Good. So the next thing, um, so uh, when we're talking about what directors want, yes, they want you to be able to have the skill set. The skills are very important. We know this, right? You can't audition for a musical and not be able to hear pitches, right? You have to have, you have to know how to sing along with a piano. You have to be able to make your voice um, uh, sing in long lines. You can't breathe in between every single word, right? We know like the skills, you have to be able to sing a song, right? Um, and then you also have to be able to act in the moment. But as I have, those of you who have all been with me this whole journey at Triple Threat Academy, you know that the true excellence in acting is about being um, truthful under the imaginary circumstances, being yourself in the moment. You saw all the exercises that we've done that are, no matter what it is you do, you have, if you're fully present, it's going to be interesting to watch. And if you're focusing on your scene partner or the person you're talking to, that's what makes it um, exciting to watch. So even how can I help this little thing that we do before we even open our mouths to start singing, it grounds us, right? And now we're ready. Okay, so now the moment after that, then you nod to the pianist, right? And uh, how many people um, get flustered when they're, and this is in a musical audition, when they're uh, putting their, their, their music on the piano for the pianist? Do you have that? Anyone? Okay. No, that's good. So just remember that when you are working with whomever will be playing the piano for you in an audition or whoever is going to be reading with you, sometimes they have a scene partner in the scene with you that sits behind the table and has a script. This, these are your partners. You want to be generous with them too. The more you give them, the more they give you. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Um, good. So let me ask you this. Where's Benita? Where's my casting director? I'm here. Great. Thanks, Benita. Um, so if you have now picked the people who come into the room to audition for Kalisha and Clarissa, what, what is something, what would be the worst scenario that could happen? If somebody came in and was not prepared, what would that look like? Um, she, what would you really not want to see representing you as far as preparation? Um, she or he um, just freeze on stage and just say, I, I cannot do this. I, I, sorry, I'm <laughs> just yeah, starting that's, suddenly. <laughs> and it's yes, kind of that's true. From your input, it's kind of wasting my time because I only have uh, 48 hours. Um, okay. Uh, next then but um at the same time we don't want to offend the the um the the aspiring performer so <laughs> yes yes um that's a great point and again it's and i'm not sure how it is in the indonesian culture you know i come from new york and it's like we're so direct right but um that said there is never a reason to be cruel 
in an audition situation. And uh, typically, even here in New York, where we're very direct, if somebody froze, we would be concerned as human beings, are you okay? And if they say, I can't do this, they leave the room and we look at each other and say, well, that was weird. But, but yes, ultimately, I would look at you, Benita, if I were Clarissa, or Clarissa would look at you and say, I thought you said they were ready, right? Because that's a reflection on you, right? Right. The other thing that you wouldn't want to represent you, if, what if I came in and you asked me to come in and for the audition, I had to prepare one scene and one song and I came in to audition and they say, do you have the song ready? And I said, uh, no, I just didn't have time to learn it. So uh, what would that, what would that be an indication of? And Clarissa and, and, um, Kalisha, if you're there, you can feel free to pick, to speak up. So you were told that you the people you would see in this 48 hours would learn something specific, a little piece of journey to the past. This is Anastasia, right? Let's pretend I'm young enough to play Anastasia. Okay. So I've learned this little, or no, I'll do the other one. The Countess, that part, right? What is that song? Anyway, I can't remember, but, uh, I've been asked to prepare that song, a little part of that song. And you're all counting on hearing me sing it. So um, I'm about to go and uh, Kalisha, go ahead and tell me I can start anytime. Okay, you can go ahead and start anytime you want. I just, uh, sorry, I just didn't learn the song. I didn't have time. Can, Can I, I say something else for you? Right? What? So, um, sorry. Can I say it directly? But I said that you have to prepare the song um, in advance. Um, yeah, I know you told so, me that, but I just didn't feel like I was at a wedding yesterday, so I didn't really. I mean. So can I sing something? You know I already that, sang my first song. Right, then you, okay, so let's just close it. But right now, that awkward silence is what happens. And what the next thing that, um, the next thing that would happen would be, you would say, okay, thank you. <laughs> right, um, we, uh, I think we need to take a short break. But we'll come back to this. Um, Thank you so much, and we'll we'll be back for part two. Let's take a what five minutes? Karaka, where how long do we take? Yeah, uh, I five minutes is fine. Okay, great. I'll see you all in five. And if anybody has any questions, put them in the chat. And we'll talk about it. Okay. If we're officially back, I I just jumped back, but I'm not sure if it was exactly five minutes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so glad this is helpful. I'm seeing all these lovely things in the chat. Thank you so much. And I'm really glad this is useful and helpful to you. So, um, all right. So moving forward, I do want to have time for real Q&A and to address a question that was spoken earlier. Um, but I want to just very quickly, how many people do we have here today? around 65 including 65 the okay great so um great okay that's just good to know let's go back sorry i'm trying to look at my screens here so i can see everybody uh great so when we're walking into the room um now we understand that we want to we want to be a certain way and the word confidence, you know, we all say, I want to be confident. Has anybody ever had any luck, any good luck saying, I'm going to be confident, and they automatically were? I find it very hard to just suddenly turn on a light switch that makes me confident, right? So for us now, what can we think about when we're walking into the room? The first word that we've been working with here is generous. How can I be generous in the room? Generous comes from believing you have something to offer. So all of the things in your mind that tell you I'm not good enough, I'll never be ready, all of these things are actually not generous 
to our team. Can you see that now? If you were to walk into the room and Kalisha and Clarissa and Benita are counting on you, how if you walk in with, well, I'm just not good enough, how does that help them? It doesn't, right? So you're allowed to be nervous, but it's also important to be brave because also you don't know what you look like in the room and you will never know. All you can be is generous from your point of view. So what I like to do uh, before, by the way, before any audition or before I start a rehearsal process um, is I like to think of ways of being that work for me in the room, right? There are ways of being that don't work, which are uh, being terrified, being closed off, being defensive, being disrespectful. Obviously, those things don't work, right? Um, but the, the things that do work, I'm going to type some words in here, and I want you to carry these words uh, in with you the next time you think about walking into a, an audition room. Be open. Be efficient. Be joyful. Be helpful. Just a few words. A few words just to think about that, that help me when I'm walking into a room. I go, okay. But if I, I can't say that I'm going to be confident or I'm, I'm going to be confident, but I'm going to be committed. I can't say that I'm going to be brilliant, but I'm going to be present. Does that make sense? Start thinking about ways of being that work like that. And it has to be something that you can actively be, not something that someone can see on you. Does that make sense? It's like me walking into the room going, I think I'm going to be beautiful. <laughs> I can't, that's in the eye of the beholder. I can't do that, right? Right? But I can be loving. I can be joyful. I can be optimistic. That's something I can do from my side, right? Good. Okay. So I'm going to cut to questions because I know um, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, I want to first go to the first one that I got, which was, what do you do when a director asks you to do something that you are not feeling good about or not comfortable with? So here's the, there are two answers. The big picture answer is from a human perspective, if a director asks you to do something that really does not feel safe or, you know, borders on something that feels very dysfunctional and dysfunctional and not right for you, if it's in an audition room, you can leave. Thank you very much. I think I'm finished, <laughs> right? That's in the big picture, right? Or if you're in a production and something is feels very wrong to you on a human disrespectful level, you find your stage manager and you talk to them about that. That's big picture. As an actor, you may or may not like this answer. You have made the decision to come in and be a team player. So, if there, if the director says, well, I want you to do this and you don't agree with it, the first thing you'll want to get clear on is uh, get curious about why the, the director has asked you to do that. Instead of thinking automatically, no, I'm not doing that. Well, why, why would you like me to do that? What is that? What is that putting across here that how does that help my message? How does that help what we're trying to do here in this play? And maybe when you hear the answer, it'll be a lot clearer to you and say, oh, okay, I'll do that. But remember, now we're getting back to Kalisha, who's the director. If Kalisha has asked you to, you know, carry this book while you're singing this song and then throw the book in the middle of the song when you're angry, she has a vision for this. Why should you say, you're not, no, I'm not doing that. Um, there is a, a premise in improvisational theater that's always yes and. Yes, I'll do that and I'll try something else, right? Or else just, or offer an alternative. Oh, I see, oh, oh, why do you want me to throw the book to show that I'm angry? Okay, great. Um, can I do that by stomping my feet or is the book throw really important to you? I'll try both, let's see what works. Be collaborative. That makes sense. Okay, next question. Do you have any tips on the business of acting, namely how to get an agent manager and pursue opportunities and begin a real career as an actor? Um, 
No, because everyone who gets an agent or a manager, it happens in a different way for every single person. I would say that you should take every performance opportunity that you can to be seen. Just be out there, word of mouth. You also never know who's in the audience. Not only may there be agents and managers in the audience, but there could be the wife or the brother of an agent or manager who says, you know, I saw this person, uh, you know, I saw Asti on stage today and I really liked them. And I, maybe you should look into that perform. Maybe you should go see that show. I thought it would be somebody that you would be interested in representing. You never know. Which is also why the most important business tip I have for you is be generous to everyone because you never know. There's no reason to be ever to be disrespectful or, or unkind. And I would say that I have had 30 years of a career in this business. Um, yes, I have my strong skill set and I have developed that over the years, but so much of the reason I get my repeat business is because I think I'm a generous person in the room that people like to have around. It's a big piece of it. It's a big piece of it. Um, so there are no, your real opportunities as an actor, you have to just, every room you're in, treat it like a real room. I think that's what it comes down to. Right. Um, I'm a teacher, obviously I'm a teacher here with you, but I teach, um, at New York university and Pace university that are both New York schools. And, um, those students graduate and uh, audition for things and plenty of people will call me and say, how were they as a student? And some of those students will feel like, oh, it doesn't really count in school. It's not real. But I have things to say. <laughs> oh, this person was a hard worker. They always showed up on time. They were brave. Even when they cracked in their song, they were willing to grow. They were, um, they were committed. I, they weren't afraid to fail. I loved that about them. Or this person never showed up to class. When they did, they were unprepared. They never really learned all the notes in their song, just some of the notes. So you only have um, two days to put up your particular concert. Um, no, I would not recommend that person. So just be who you want to be in every room, in the highest room, be that in every room. Um, what else? Questions? Do you see how the audition is in your, yeah, in your control? How do we get noticed if we want to be a director instead of being an actor? Start directing things. <laughs> okay. You just met a whole bunch of creative people in this program. So if you have a script, pick a script that you really want to direct and cast it from the people that you met in this program and say, would you like to meet on a Saturday? And we will rehearse this and we'll read it around the table. And then maybe we'll put it on its feet. And um, are you interested in volunteering your time to do this with us? And let's do it. And then we'll put it on. And then we'll invite the whole faculty of JPAC and see if they like it. And right, this is how you do it. You don't wait for somebody to notice you and give you a million dollars in a starring role in a Hollywood movie. It's not how it works. Although it works like that for 0 0.001. You know, there'll be like one in a million that that happens for. So I can't say it never happens, but it is not the way it, it typically happens. Um, do I have tips for self-tape auditions? The most important one is lighting. Okay, you see how I am well lit? I have light behind my camera so that you don't have any problem seeing me. Um, and we use these Zoom backgrounds for a reason so that I'm not, um, you know, for an audition, um, Bagus, is that how you say your name? Bagus, hi. Um, uh, Bagus has a hi. You have a brick wall behind you, which is kind of great. Yes. It's a neutral. It's a neutral thing. Um, if anybody can see him, or if Karaka wants to pin Bagus, you can see that there's a there's a brick wall there, so it's nothing distracting. Um, whereas for an audition, obviously for a class, you're perfect. But Mario, are you there? Mario. For if, if yours was an audition, I'd be very curious what was in all those things behind you. <laughs> and I'd be and I'd be focusing on those rather than your performance. Right. So that's what you want to for self tape auditions, make it as as simple behind you. Make sure you're lit well from the front. Um, and that's what I would say about that. Uh, 
any tips on memorizing lines or monologue technique practice you know it's it's the answer you don't want to hear you have to do it over and over again you have to really study what the lines mean you have to understand what the intention is behind it we talked about this and and take the time to read it carefully so that you really know what's happening in the scene who are you talking to what do you want what is the obstacle what do you have to lose all of these things that's what's going to clear it up. And then you just have to practice. Uh, when we're walking in an audition room and you said, be open. If unfortunately that day we're feeling unwell or recently had an injury, is it okay to disclose in the beginning before you start doing the audition or try your best first and then tell them after? My personal opinion is just do your best. They're not interested. They have 48 hours. They are not interested in your life story. They want to know if you can be helpful. You know? Because if you tell me you're sick or you're not well, am I just supposed to imagine the version of you that is much better than this? Uh, that doesn't help me, right? And then later, if you have a callback or something, you know, you might get, get word to the casting director, you know, they're just getting over this injury. I don't know, but I would never, I would not do that in the room. I don't think it's useful. And if you're really too sick to go to the audition, do not go. If you're really like, you know, that's also a waste of your time. If you are, and I'm talking about really not able to sing. I'm not saying your high notes aren't perfect. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, you really have, it's very clear to everyone in the room that you're sick. When you open your mouth, that's not helping anybody. And especially, obviously, in these days, it just puts a sense of panic into the room. You do not want to do that. It actually seems selfish, right? Well, I thought it was more important that you hear me sing sick than everyone in the room be safe from infection. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so no. What happens when we blank or, and let me also say before any of these answers, this is my opinion. You might have another teacher who says different things and that's okay, but um, this is the way I feel about these things. What happens when we blank or freeze when we come to an audition, for example, when we're singing a song, are we allowed to start over? Uh, the answer is yes. If you can catch it soon enough, I think if you're in the middle of the song and you really stop and freeze, you might have to, you could stop and then just say, pick it up from the beginning of the line you were just singing, but don't go all the way to the beginning. However, if you are starting to sing a song and you go, happy birthday, I'm sorry, could we start over? Happy birth, that's okay. That's okay. You're human. You're allowed to be human in the room. We cast humans, remember? For someone who has a little experience in acting, auditioning for a partner project, I feel intimidated by auditioners, especially the experienced ones. What would you suggest for people like me so we can be sure of ourselves? Uh, okay. The question too is, you see it in the chat, able to convince the director and casting people in the room, we may be right for the part, even though we're experienced, inexperienced. You walk in and you're generous and helpful, period. It's the same answer, right? You will feel intimidated by, there will always be someone in the room that you feel is better. That's just a given. But you have to stay in your lane because imagine, once again, are you going to go in for that directing team and go, well, I felt really good about my audition, but then I saw so-and-so out there and now I'm just not feeling great. And I hope this goes well, because I don't have any experience. How do you think the director and everybody, you know, now they're like, how long is this person going to be feeling insecure? I don't think they're going to be very helpful to us. So you just have to decide, you have to be open to the magic of the universe. Different things happen. Things you know, I say good things fall out of the sky all the time. You just don't know. How often in your life have you had a lucky break on anything or picked up a piece of money in the street or, you know, weird things happen all the time or been thinking of somebody and then the phone rings and it's them, right? Just leave some of those variables, variables up to the mystery of life. It will work out. But don't get caught up in it. Don't bring other people into the room with you. It's your audition time. Uh, if there's any uncomfortable scene that an actor has performed, like a sex scene, for example, does the actor already aware of it in advance before signing the contract? Yes. 
do we read the script first or sign the contract first? Um, yes, particularly if there's something like that, you, you, will, you would have read the script prior. And uh, as far as I'm talking in the professional sense too, like if it looks like there's nudity in the script, you do not agree to do it until you have some kind of thing that you've signed where everybody agrees that you're going to do that. Okay. Um, anything else? One time I wrote audition for a role that spoke Spanish. At the end, I admitted I wasn't a native speaker. The director was like, advice, next time don't say that because he couldn't tell. Um, okay, so this is good. I feel like if you can do it, great. Um, did, but the director, does the director speak Spanish? <laughs> if the director doesn't speak Spanish, you know, it's like somebody coming and faking Indonesian to me and me saying, I couldn't tell. Why would I know? I don't speak it, right? So, um, yeah, if you feel very, I guess, Ashley, if you felt very confident about that Spanish, and I would say, you know, another good thing to do would be try it out on somebody first that speaks Spanish. So if you have a friend who speaks Spanish or a native speaker or, um, I don't know, there's, there are things online that you can go actually, and you can go and like speak to somebody, um, something called italki, have you heard of that? Uh, that you can actually speak to it for like, pay for 10 minutes to speak to somebody. And you know, you could get some feedback that way too. But um, he did speak Spanish and I studied for many years. Well, actually that's great. So now here's what's good. Now you know, that director gave you that great piece. You actually had a Spanish speaker say to you, you sound great. You don't have to admit that you don't know how to do it. Wonderful. Because the last thing you want to do is sell your, you don't want to lie about what you cannot do. Okay. So if somebody says to you, do you speak Spanish and you don't, do not say that you do. You say that you don't. Right. However, if you do, and you've already been told you speak great Spanish, don't start selling us your limitations. Does that make sense? Um, there's also tandem for language exchange. Great. So you guys can check that out. Uh, good. Good, good. So, and, and very importantly, um, at the end of your piece, make sure you remember how, um, I think it was with Dion, uh, she finished her thing. She stated her monologue and we had her sort of stay present with us instead of deflate. Remember at the very last line of your scene, monologue, song, whatever it is, you stay right there. Even if you crack, even if you don't feel great, you have to stay committed. You are actually showing us how you will deal with mistakes in the room, right? Now, if it's something crazy, like the table collapsed and everything fell down, you know, you're allowed to laugh and say, wow, that was, that was weird, right? But, but what I, but what is not useful in the room is finishing a song or a speech and then going, oh, that was awful. Or even if you don't say that was awful, rolling your eyes at yourself, that is not going to be useful in the rehearsal room. Um, do you have to be a resident to be a part of a show in a different country? Uh, not necessarily, but if you're part of a the professional shows, there is a, uh, certain union rules that do not allow that or they'll have to be an exchange. It was a professional show in Jakarta and a professional show here. The Jakarta actor would be in the Broadway show here, but it may mean that the Broadway actor would have to be in Jakarta in, in the role there so that there's an equal exchange, equal job opportunity. Uh, there's a question you might've missed. Oh, how do you pick roles? I did pick it. I did miss it. Thanks. Because sometimes typecasting often occurs and there isn't many options. There aren't many options. Is it okay to take risks and audition for something that's slightly different physical requirement genre than you're used to? I think risk taking is great. Um, and, but also you have to know, in Jane's words, you have to know what you have to offer. So if something, if maybe you're maybe a little physically different for something, but you can really sing it and act it and and put forward the essence of it and you know that you're right for it in a lot of the other ways this it's worth going for why not why not um 
And, uh, and it, yeah, I would say don't take yourself out of things. Let people tell you what they're looking for. And if you are not right for them for it, they will tell you, but, but don't waste time by saying, I'm going to audition with a song for a 13 year old. Right. Or this song is sung, typically sung by a 75 year old man. And now I'm going to sing it. That makes it hard in auditions for people to concentrate on you because then they sit and they say, well, why did they pick that song? It doesn't connect. Do you understand that? It's distracting actually from your work. Um, oh my gosh. In a typical Broadway audition, would there be some kind of interview or would it be just singing, doing the monologue? There's always a little bit of, not a formal interview, an informal interview. I might say to, uh, let's say, Gabriella, I might say, Gabriella, where did you go to school? What did you, um, do you have any dance training? What is your background in um, tap dancing? And I'll have those answers. And sometimes it's on the resume, but it's the way that people answer if they are defensive, weird, uncomfortable. That gives me information, right? Or, oh, you just did this production at JPAC? Um, how was it? Well, I hated the choreography. <laughs> you know, if you say something like that, I go, oh, that's odd because my, it was my good friend that did the choreography, right? Like, you, this the world is very small. Why are you bad mouthing somebody that you've worked with? Will you bad mouth me when I work with somebody, right? After, right? So that's what, that's what happens in the interview. It's just an extra chance to see more how can I help quite frankly. Uh, do you have tips to act a character that's really opposite of your true self? Do you have any tips how to act multiple different roles in one performance? Okay, these are two questions. The first question is acting, every time I get a role, I make a list, two lists. How is this person the same as me? And how is this person different? And you'll find that you'll find a lot more same maybe than you think. You know, I'll start with human. If it is a human, maybe it's not. Maybe it's a fairy or an animal or something. Human, woman, married, not married, right? All the things. They are a sister. I am a sister. They have parents. I have parents, right? You start to see, and you start to see certain uh, similarities. And then the differences are good. The differences mean you get to act. And, oh, what might, might have made them such a, if I'm going to play Ursula the Sea Witch and the Little Mermaid, what might have made Ursula so jealous and mean? She must have really, really wanted to be a star at some point and didn't get what she wanted. Well, I've had that feeling, right? You start to go, oh, that's not so different, not so different than me. Um, how to, pay, to act multiple different roles in one performance? Same thing, do the work, commit to who are you talking to? Who is this person? What do I want? It's all, takes a lot more work than you think, right? It's not about confidence. It's about doing the work and generously offering it. And you can't generously offer it if you haven't done it, right? Um, sometimes we audition and really prepare to audition for a part like Elphaba, but then the director asks you to try Glinda's part. Are we expected to memorize or already prepare that or other roles? Uh, no, if you've been told in advance, please prepare Elphaba. And then you get there and they say, will you try Glinda? You can say, um, I'm going to need a few minutes outside to look at this scene. And um, I haven't really, you know, if you really don't know the song, you can say, can I come to a callback with the song? You know, can I have time to prepare it? But let's say, because a lot of people know Wicked already, you kind of do know it. You can say, I'll try it, but I've never auditioned with it before. This is me just trying it because I like to listen to the album. You can say that. That's fair. You know, you, no one expects you to be perfect. And also you can be very clear that you only, you asked me to do something I, I prepared for you. The fact that I'm doing something that is extra um, shows you how willing I am to play. Um, uh, 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 I we expected, yes, you read off a script in an audition, unless you've had a lot of time to prepare it. That depends. Uh, should we pick, because you don't want to be looking like this. They want to, how, again, how can you be helpful? If you want to see if I'm right for this role, does it help you if I'm doing this? Or if I'm doing this, right? Uh, 
should we pick monologues that are similar to the character we auditioned or should we just have a repertoire of monologue that we're excelled at? Good question. Uh, you should definitely have a, you should have monologues that you excel at and they don't have to, there doesn't have to be seven of them. It can be one or two, right? And if they're both completely, completely wrong for the character, um, yeah, it'd be great to find something that is more um, in line with the character, but it has to be worked on and as well rehearsed, okay? Uh, do I have the ability to read music if you wanna become, do you have to have the ability to read music if you wanna become a musical actress? It helps, what makes you more helpful in the room? It is not a requirement, but it is helpful. You, if you really don't, so what that means is you might be a little slower in the rehearsal room. It's okay, but just know it also helps you if you can, um, if you can read. Uh, but it is not a requirement, but it may be, if something is very, very musically dense, they might ask you in, an, in the audition right there, like, do you read music? How well do you read music, right? Um, because they don't have time. We're putting this show up in two weeks and it's six part harmony the whole time. How, how good are you with harmony? Don't lie, by the way, that would be bad. Right. Um, and they might say, okay, uh, if you don't read music and you're not good with harmony, not this time, but boy, were you great. Maybe I'll bring you in for something else later and they'll appreciate your honesty. Have you ever gotten a role with a specific occupation, writer, doctor, for instance? Oh yeah, what did you do in researching about the occupation? Research is really important. You just read anything that you can because it helps to know, you know, how do I say to you, act like a doctor? What does that even mean, right? I would have to watch what doctors have to do. I would have to learn about, is this a, is this a really good day or have I not slept in three days, right? How many patients have I seen today? What is typical for a neurologist as opposed to a gastroenterologist? Or, you know, like learn because every bit of information helps you. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay, those are all the questions I can see. Do you have anything else? Let me know. In the meantime, I'm typing. A question uh, okay. by Ayumi a bit. Oh, do's and don'ts in the resume? That? Um, speaking of resume, what are your do's and don'ts in putting a good resume together? Do put what you are comfortable doing in special skills. Do not say that you have a particular dialect if it's not good, right? If you just started learning one yesterday and you figure you'll put it on your resume and catch up with it, no. The resume has to say what you are capable of now. Um, it all depends on the place that you're auditioning, the marketplace. It might be, if you're a young person, like a very young person, it might be okay to put um, some high school credits on there because it's all you have. But I would not do that if I were 20 years old. I would not put anything from high school on there. Um, and then you might find in the audition room that they'll say to you, what roles have you done? And you might say, well, I did this in high school. <laughs> you can say that, you know, um, it's a little bit more casual, but, uh, yeah, that's what I would say. The, the biggest don't is don't lie. And the do is don't be afraid to, uh, Put, if, if, if a particular play that you did was directed by somebody who is well-known in the community, you can put the director on there. Oh, they worked with this person. Great, because I saw the last show that that person did and they put together very professional productions. Good. Or, oh, they worked with this choreographer. That choreographer is a friend of mine. So now I can call that choreographer and say, did you enjoy working with this person? So do include names of people you have good relationships with. You had a bad experience, do not put the director there. The director, if you do not feel like the director, if you fought with the director, I would not put them on there. I would learn from your mistakes and move on. Yeah? I have more words for you.
the words you can walk into the room with. Oh gosh, I, I typing. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Karaka. I'm I'm typing them directly to Karaka. I think I'm putting them out in the. Yeah, to yeah. Everyone, it's thank the, you for translating. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Thank you. So again, you know, tenacious. Don't give up. Don't give up if you if something doesn't go well in the middle of the audition. Keep going. Also, be grateful that you get to be doing this, right? Um, I, you know, I have put in the I put the words humble and grateful in here. They don't mean meek or making yourself small. Do you understand that? You can be grateful that you are. I'm grateful today to be talking about this with you. I'm grateful that we all love the arts. I'm grateful that there are still auditions being held in the world after a pandemic. I'm grateful. Isn't this great? That's the, that's the energy that you want to come in with. I'm also humble because I know that although I have a lot of experience and things to offer you, working with you is going to teach me things. I have to come with beginner's mind too. And I'm learning, I've learned a lot actually during my time with you, which has been very helpful to me. Um, any other tips of how to behave around the other auditionees in the waiting room or the competitors? Um, different people have different preferences. Some people it helps to be talking with your friends before the audition. I don't like that. I like these are my friends. Right here. I put my headphones on and sometimes it'll be music that makes me feel like excited and good. Sometimes it'll be massage music, something that will make me calm and relaxed and I can talk to myself during. Um, but I'm polite. I say hello to everybody there. I wish them well. And then I stay in my own lane. Um, is having a major or minor in acting or theater worth it? It depends. It's it worth it to you. The truth is you do not need a piece of paper or a degree to do this for a living, but the training will make you more helpful and better in the room. Out of the three skills, acting, singing, and dancing, which one do you think is your strength and weakness? How do you overcome that weakness? And do we really have to be good in all of that to be cast? The word is cast, not casted. I'm seeing that in a lot. And I know it's a language thing, but seeing that in English speakers too, it just makes me crazy. Cast is the past tense of cast. Um, uh, out of the three skills, uh, I would say that dancing is the one that I have spent I trained in all three, but I don't do dancing as much as I used to anymore. So I'm not as uh, super competitive in that field anymore, but I'm also at an age where no one's really asking me to do it in a super competitive way anymore, which is fine by me. Um, but I just get better at, but, but I would say the dancing was always the one that for me felt uh, the least easy. and. You just work on it and do your best because ultimately if you know you've done the work on it that's what gives you the confidence what what makes you feel bad is thinking oh god they're asking me to do this thing that i don't do when i haven't even worked on it then you start to shrink and get defensive and uncomfortable and it's the worst feeling ever um but by the way all of it needs attention i still take voice lessons i still go to acting coachings you know um when I have to audition for a dance thing, like I still do get asked to do it because people know I dance. So, you know, I still go to the gym or I, I, you know, I keep myself in shape, but I also go to, if I have to learn a particular piece of choreography, I get with a dancer friend and have them help me prepare. Um, what is your routine for an audition day? Um, work out, sweat. That's the most important sweat and so if you're running if you're jumping whatever you're swimming whatever it is and then warm up my voice and do my little remember this red leather yellow leather um for those of you who weren't here you just put that in your mouth and you say whatever the tricky line is with the best diction you can with this impediment and practice that and then take it out and you find that your tongue is now warmed up it's like lifting weights it's the same kind of thing um i go over my material and um and the thing about it is that you have to get better and better at that because audition days for me are no longer audition days i have 
I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I have, I'm a teacher. I have a, a big audition can happen in the middle of a day that I have fully committed other places. So where can I find the time to prepare so that I'm ready to go? Uh, how, you know, how do you deal with an annoying director? I only, you know what annoying means, but they, they do their job. You do yours. You know, you, you can go home at the end of the day and call your best friend and tell them that you were annoyed today. But other than that, you got to go in and do your job. How do I know that acting is my true passion? Because I'm in that age where I don't really know what my true passion is. Um, I don't think you have to know what your true passion is. If you enjoy doing it, you're going to keep doing it. Right. So that's how I knew. I just loved doing it. I always wanted to be working on the next thing or reading a play or talking to um, writers or that to me is a happy place. Like what you know, what you need to know is I came back from Italy. I've so jet lagged. I haven't slept. I'm exhausted. I taught. I got home at like three in the morning two days ago. I taught all day yesterday and I'm here with you first thing in the morning today because you know what? I love it. Yes, I have a responsibility to show up because I made a commitment to you, but also I love it. I love talking about acting and performing. I love it. Um, do you have any tips on overcoming rejections personally and self-doubt? Yeah, you can have a five-minute pity party and feel sorry for yourself and cry and do that in the space of a really good friend or a parent or a loved one that will support you in that. And if it was something that was a really big deal, I'll give you a day. <laughs> Take a little time, but then after you have to move on. So I, I do give me, give myself that time, but then, um, I, I know what's next. I ask myself, what's next? What's next? What's next? Um, I think we have five minutes, so I just want to make sure with Karaka that we're okay. Uh, having a performance arts, arts degree does not really matter compared to not having one. It's not about the piece of paper. It's about having the skills to compete. So you can, if you can compete with someone who has the piece of paper, it's not a problem. Or you have to actually have put the time and the work in, whether it was in a university setting or not. I don't think there's an age limit to start. No. Why should there be? There are always plays and shows being written about humans and Every story has all kinds of humans in it, you know? Um, is there any different type of acting that plays out as amazing character without enthusiasm? I'm not sure what that means, but I'm going to interpret it as, I, uh, you can see a lot of incredible quiet acting that happens in film where there's such a rich inner life being built behind the eyes. and is inc But it's the same thing as we've discussed in this class before, you can jump around all you want. You can make your voice really high and really big. If there's nothing behind it, it's not acting, right? Um, well, I guess we're gonna have to wrap up. I wanna thank you all so much for what you have taught me, for inviting me to be part of the Academy, to the wonderful JPEG team, and to all of you for um, inviting me to collaborate with you and I've, I've learned so much and thank you for making me a better teacher. And, uh, I hope that this has all been helpful to you. And what's important to me is that you leave with some tools. And I know this may have been, um, thank you. Our time was short. Uh, I know this may have been not what you thought or you thought I was going to come in and say, um, it's really, you have to be the best singer in the room or, you know, you have to, it's all about the high note. It's just not what I believe and not what I have learned in my experience. It's about how much work you put in preparing and then how collaborative and generous you are in the room. That's what people want. And that's what people love. And so thank you for being collaborative and generous with me. Those of you who prepared material ahead of time for this class, thank you for doing that. And um, it's just a great joy to connect with you. So thank you. Thank you for all that love in the chat. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andrea, for all the lessons, but also for showing us firsthand of being so generous and helpful. 
we hope our paths may cross again one day. And please, uh, guys, don't forget to follow the Andrea Burns to keep up with, her, with Andrea. Before we take a picture, uh, I want to give the time to Kat Raka from JPEG to give some information. Uh, or do you, or Kat Raka, do you want to take a picture first before? Uh, I think let's just take a picture first so Andrea can go if she has to go. Okay, all right. Uh, so if everyone can open your camera, I'll give you some time and we will take a picture. Okay. Are you guys ready? Take mine too. I'm not ready. ready. Mm -hmm. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Let's take a picture. Three, two, one, cheese. Okay. How can again. I help? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three, two, one, cheese. Okay. Yay. Or do you, do you guys want to take a story with um, you guys all saying bye or like waving your hand or something? Yeah. Okay. Can you know? a story. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andrea, for everything. Thank you. It's been such a gift to work with Jakarta Performing Arts Center. Thank you guys for making me better. Mwah. What a pleasure. Love you guys. Thank you. Love you, Andrea. Bye -bye. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea. 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 Thank you, Thank you so much for joining the class tonight. Uh, the last acting class with Andrea Setley. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, if you like the course and if you would like to see more, let us know on our social media so that our other partners uh, will know that there's such a great enthusiasm from the students so they can consider making a similar or even better programs in the future. So uh, I'll just keep it short since it's uh, late. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that we will be having a break uh, on May, starting from May, May 2nd until the second week of May. So we uh, the classes will restart on Monday, May 16th. And for any other information, please stay tuned on the WhatsApp group uh, because we will have an announcement shortly about the audition program, which is in a in addition to the RTC program where you can uh, try, uh, you will know more about the uh, audition process this time for from Carla. And you can also sign up as a part active participant for the audition. Uh, but we will, uh, we will prioritize students who haven't had the chance to go up and get direct feedback from our facilitators. So please understand it's to get uh, everyone the same uh, opportunity. And secondly, we will also have a performance day. Uh, this is quite exciting. It's, uh, it will be self-tape, so you will record yourself uh, with your performance. We will share the form and also the guideline shortly. I think within like two or three days, we are still finalizing the details with Carla. Uh, unfortunately, this time the performance day is only for singing, singing with, but not only just purely singing. We hope it's uh, singing with some sort of performance, like you can act out the song. It doesn't have to be from musical theater, but it needs to have some uh, element of performance to it. So just stay tuned as well. Uh, that will be coming soon. And finally, uh, I, on behalf of the Triple Threat Academy and uh, Jakarta Performing Arts Community, would like to say, you know, I didn't know if I mohon maaf lahir batin. We, uh, we apologize for any mishaps or mistakes that we made, and we hope you enjoy the vacation uh, and be re-energized to start the class again in two weeks' time. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Raka. Thank you, JPEG. Thank you. Thank you, Bye, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Selamat lebaran semuanya. Selamat lebaran. Selamat lebaran semua. Happy holiday. Selamat Terima kasih. Terima kasih.